Moving on to topic two, I wanted to talk about things that kind of took you. <laughs> Thank you. Things that kind of took you by surprise. So, um, whether it's a game, whether it's a movie, whatever it might be, just something that you experienced going into thinking, you know, I'm just going to give this a try. And it really just went above and beyond your expectations. And maybe you fell in love with it or just, I don't know, obsessed sounds a little weird, but you really got a lot out of it. Um, the reason I was thinking about this, a little game uh, just came out, not just came out, as of recording, maybe a month ago, came out on PlayStation Xbox. That's been out for a while, but it's been Hades. Um, it's been on uh, Switch. I remember I popped this up. You remember that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude. Uh, I was ago, playing I think. That. Oh, you're playing that too, John? Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was yes, like, right I now. think John likes this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm right now. No, I'm actually looking through my library because I'm trying to figure out what, what game that was. Cool. Because there was a couple games. Nice. Um, but yeah, I've been playing this pretty much nonstop the past two weekends, like on my time off, whenever I get a chance to play. And I'm just having so much fun with it. And I remember watching the reveal, whether it was E3 or Game Awards, I don't remember exactly which one. And seeing it, I was like, eh, eh I mean, cool, I guess, the concept, but I, it just didn't hook me. But then with the game seemed to get a lot of traction once it released, a lot of uh, praises and awards. I heard people in the kind of funny talking really well about it. Obviously, Billy brought it up and was talking about it. Some people at work were talking about it. So I was like, you know what? It's coming out on PS4. I'll give it a shot. So, grabbed it, um, and yeah, tr finally tried it out. And the roguelite style of the die, like, lose everything and restart, I thought I would hate. I actually really love it here. The runs, if you complete it, at least my best time is like a half hour. So, it's not like, oh my god, I just spent four hours doing this thing and I gotta start all over. Like, it's uh manageable time wise and doesn't feel like it's been that long um for those of you guys who don't know what this game is you are a character named zagreus and you're essentially just trying to escape hell because you want to leave um it's set with greek gods and goddesses and you're trying to leave by using a wide array of weapons that you can choose from at the beginning and then as you progress on these randomly generated dungeons, you can get powers from different gods and goddesses to kind of help you. But each run, each time you attempt your escape, it's different. Whether your weapon is different, whether the modifiers on your weapon are different, whatever skills you get from the gods, whatever uh, abilities you upgrade, upgrade, whether it's your skill, your damage, your defense, whatever it is. Um, and then if you progress farther in the game, you can add more challenge to your runs maybe enemies hit harder or there's more enemies in general or you have less health in general um so it just it, it's very fresh every time you do it it's not rinse repeat even though essentially you are doing the same thing um it's just a lot of fun i didn't expect to have so much fun with it and this is one that just like later tonight i'll be playing it again i've already escaped i think three times total um but to really finish the game, I think you need to escape 10 times in total to get to the epilogue. Um, so I'm excited to do that. And the nice thing too, I know this has been a talk in the video game world for a while with um, specifically like Souls games like Bloodborne or Sekiro, etc. is like more of a, um, what's the word? Accessibility to like play it if you can't play at that skill level or you're having a real tough time this game does have a god mode now i haven't played around with it so i don't know specifics but like you essentially get more powerful every time you do die so you can just focus on the story elements and not like oh just rage about it every time um so yeah that's been my biggest example as of late of like holy shit this really was really good and i've been enjoying it um and i was just curious what you guys either had in the past or maybe recently that uh, took your attention like that um actually it's really surprised so there's like there's like two games um hades is definitely kind of on that that tier right now of playing um and then if you like that game brett you need to try uh remember the game that i told you about a while back uh dead cells yes yeah i still have been meaning to get to that eventually but yeah so so uh there's another one called uh the dark gods or something like that okay it it's almost exactly like um hades hmm. but 
that one, bro, I was like, eh, let's try it. And I was like, I was hooked. And then someone said, it's just, Hades is just like it. I was like, I gotta get it. <laughs> so that, that's what made me get Hades. Mm-hmm. And the Greek gods, like, I'm, I'm in love with the game. Mm-hmm. So both of those games, yeah, 100%. And Dead Cells itself, dude, they're, it's so hard. Like, I got to a point in Dead Cells where I was like, I can't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. I don't have the key to go. Oh, my gosh. Oh. I have to force <laughs> myself to die. And I couldn't because there was no more monsters i killed them all so I, gotta kid. <laughs> I gotta quit but um no this actually this one was actually really 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 surprising to me i did not think i would get so into it the way i did but jurassic world evolution is that it's basically you just build your it, own jurassic okay it, park okay park. okay yeah i was like is this the roller coaster tycoon jurassic park cool yeah, okay yeah. interesting like, i did not think i would get so into it uh-huh. like i first started i was like yeah well, i'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> bored uh-huh. and let's play it it's free it's on xbox pass oh the game most pass those, yeah yeah most of those like those eh, let's give it a shot is where i get those from smart so i mean I'm, that's what it should be used for is like yeah try this out and then if you like it either obviously you don't have to buy it with game pass but then you could if you needed to because right. it's leaving or whatever nice yeah so like i was playing it and like i i just sat there and i just i started planning out I was like okay so if i go and i do this and i make this money i could spend it on this and then and then i can get this dinosaur and then it'll boost this up to here and i'll get more people i'll get more money holy cow i have five billion dollars right now and i spent <laughs> like at the end of the day my roommate came out and he's just like the hell are you doing i was like building I'm jurassic talking, world <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm talking out loud aren't i he's like yes you are thinking out loud and you woke me up i'm so sorry and he's like it's all right i had to wake up anyways but <laughs> what are you playing and i started explaining it to him he's like well i'm glad you're that ingrained in that <laughs> game. i would never play that or just uh, any kind of like story game as well. Kind of like I, I watch a lot of like Markiplier and him just goofing off and playing games. Like I think it was uh, Phantasma and The Forest. I, I've been watching him play those games, and I'm just like, that looks like a really fun game. Mm-hmm. But I don't. I think that would be like a game for me, Billy, and Brett to play, for it to be fun. Mm-hmm. It's like going and playing alone. I'm like, yeah, that would be fun. Fair. Oh, I think I saw it. I saw the dog, John. I think. Oh yeah, yeah. He's he's an old buddy. He's like <laughs> thirteen. <laughs> yeah, he's he's my roommate. He's he's like he's looking out the window for him. He's like, when's he gonna come Aww. home? <laughs> uh, Billy, you got anything? Oh God, it's up to me. <laughs> no, well, I, mean... I don't. I don't have a a, a video game. Yeah, um, that's fine. That really piqued my interest. But what I do have, give me give me one second. Sure. <laughs> Chat, he is now leaving his chair. He has walked to the back of his room. He has grabbed something. something. He has sat back down. <laughs> so over the... Was that a second? So over the yeah. summer, um, one of the books that I read, I read about five books this past summer. And one of the books I read, I got it at um, Northshire down on Broadway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Broadway. Um, <laughs> and I was looking around trying to find a good one. And I found Into Thin Air. By John Crack Crack whatever that name is, uh-huh. um, but it's about the 1996 um, disaster on a, on Mount Everest. Okay. When they uh, somebody was hiking up there, or a group was going up there to hike, and a bunch of people died, a bunch of people got um, screwed over by bad weather and everything. And I read the book. I think this was it was 333 pages, and I finished it in about three days. Nice. I so blew through bad. the book. Yeah, that's pretty I, good. I blew through the book. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, and I do like mountain climbing and everything. I'm never going to climb Mount Everest because, one, this book was terrifying. Mm-hmm. Two, it's very cold up there, and I don't want to do st- like a mountain like that. Like That's just something absurd. But like mountaining and mountaineering is very interesting to me. And like when I read that book, I kind of just became engulfed in Mount Everest for like a week. And I just I watched like two documentaries on it, and uh, just like the, like the planning and the science that goes into like sending people up that mountain is absurd. Like they have it figured out, but obviously not because people are still getting killed on it. Mm-hmm. But that's because weather's so like changing and everything like that. But um, yeah, yeah that was something that really uh, yeah always wins. 
Yeah. But uh, yeah, very interesting to read. They have like four camps set up at different elevations, so you can get acclimated and everything. It's to even That'd get be... there, it's like a six-day hike just to get to the base of Mount Everest because of how remote it is. Hmm. It's that uh, must be like a literal crazy like experience to stay at the camps as you're going. Oh through. yeah, oh yeah, and like the because uh, you're just in tents and you're in the Appalachian Range, like or the Himalayan Range, Himalayan or Appalachian? Himalayan. 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 Yeah, yeah, Himalayan Range, and it's just uh, it's crazy, and you got all the other like 28,000 feet or like foot feet or feet mountains all around you. And <laughs> right. it's just a uh, crazy experience. So I got into that for like a week or two, just watching um, other people who had gone out there taking videos of all that stuff and just seeing the, the beauty of it all. Mm. There we go there myself. Cause I'd probably die, but uh, definitely was a, a good stint in the summer of just uh, getting engulfed in that and getting swamped in that. It was pretty cool. Pretty interesting. Nice. Yeah, good book too, by the way. Not a sponsor, <laughs> but could be. No, I'm good book. Read it. I would, yes. uh, I would definitely say, you know, I, I forgot it was kind of like a, a, you know, kind of a twofer. It could be like videos or anything like that as well. Mm -hmm. Like, I uh, like, just like everyone else, uh, you know, Netflix became a hot commodity. Um, I watched a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff and there was like this one show that absolutely like i watched one episode and i watched it all the way through mm. and it's probably one of my favorite shows and i will it's it's like you know how some people put the office on for cre creature comfort yeah. yeah it's like oh i just need that in the background that's my show well there's this show it's called uh, uh i need to be real quiet because if the alexa turns on i'll be really <laughs> mad it's called uh, alexa and katie mother <laughs> never mind <laughs> um, but uh it's about this girl who got cancer and it's like towards the end where she's going into remission okay um and it's just about her life in high school and literally just like what it means to be a teenage girl and what her life is like surviving cancer and what wow. her family goes through and it's, it's like a little it's like one of those sitcoms like uh that 70s show almost it's funny it's it's lighthearted, but when it gets like deep it's deep yeah. and i i absolutely fell in love with the show it was like yeah it is a really good show and it's like four seasons so it's literally like they start as freshmen and go all the way to senior year mm. so wow. it's just like, I like that. oh that's pretty cool nice and then and then also cobra kai you know <laughs> i still need to watch that still need to watch oh that. dude oh you need hey, wait, have you seen <laughs> Have you seen the original movies? I've seen the original. I saw the first one. I don't think I've seen Karate Kid two or three. Yeah, you. I could probably might... find them somewhere. I. Oh, you can always find them. <laughs> yeah, you can find them. I mean, they're definitely on YouTube. I know that. Hmm. But uh, actually, I think they might be on Netflix because they I think they bought the rights to it. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. But um, yeah, it, a lot of people from two and three show up gotcha. in the show, so. Mm -hmm. It, it would be good to know because mm. it, it tells the story and you're like ah oh, so that's why him and johnny are so mad at each other gotcha okay but it's really good and it's, it's like it's not it's not like a kid show it's like they they swear there's like uh there's a billboard where they spray paint a dick on somebody's <laughs> face so it's like it's definitely not like a kid show mm. <laughs> it's it's definitely made for our generation nice yeah, I think. So build... I think you like. Okay. Um, yeah, I think building on the show uh, thing, just as you were like going through yours, I was trying to think of like ones that recently have um, were like that. Um, I thought of four. <clears throat> so these are. Not... <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, dude! COVID has has made so many shows in my heart. Yeah. But those were definitely like the big ones. Yeah, these were COVID and even pro pre COVID times uh, that these ones popped up, but. So it was a mix of Netflix and HBO. Um, so the first one, a lady introduced me to because I got into it real late. But this was one I heard a lot of good things about. And I was like, eh, I don't know if it's for me. And that was Game of Thrones. Um, oh, we, yeah. Yeah, whenever, you know, long distance we were visiting one another, we would watch seasons of that. 
and like I was getting <laughs> so invested and it was funny because she had already seen it um, this was pre the last season so like seen it up to that point and the whole time like oh you know a little commentary like oh i don't like this person oh i like this person who's this person again i know we've seen him who the, the? Like, just like reacting to everything so that was fun just being able to freely say exactly what i was thinking in the moment right. instead of like we're at a movie shut the fuck up <laughs> you know <laughs> or whatever like experiencing right. it for the first time and she's like exactly. uh, like i said she's already seen it so she's getting the entertainment value of what i'm reacting to yep so that was great I know the last season was hit or miss for a lot of people, more on the miss side, but I still yes. love that show. <laughs> it, was a, it was a great time. Um, right. And then another one that I fell in love with on HBO Max and uh, Lady and I watched a bit of, we kind of dropped off just randomly. I don't, I think it just, we forgot, not forgot, but just didn't put it into our schedule. Um, but Westworld, I was really, uh, I, really enjoying I that, that show. Good. I heard um, that was good. Yeah, I would definitely recommend it. I think we made it, I don't know if we finished season two, but we started it. Season one's fantastic. Season one is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and then fantastic. we were enjoying it, like I said, going into season two. It just happened to fall off, like many things for us. We like start it, and then we're like, ah, <laughs> just something new came along. Um, so that one was a great one. Um, another one was Sex Education on Netflix. I'm surprised I like that show so much. So it's a Netflix original. It came out a couple years ago. Um, but essentially what it is, is is a boy and a, his mom living together, dad uh, separated. She is a sex therapist. And obviously she's very, like she takes appointments at the house. She's got a lot of weird things around the house, whatever. But the kid has been around this information so he kind of knows a lot of it so he's essentially a very strange kid at school but not like just because he knows the information not like he's strange himself so he's going to school high school and high school is a muck with obviously everybody hooking up and all these things so some of the kids learn that like his mom has this knowledge and they go to him for like trying to figure out problems. <laughs> so he kind of becomes a sex therapist at the school of like trying to help the That's kids funny. with their problems and figuring it all out. And there's just whole <laughs> high school dynamic of like his friends getting involved and stuff and this. So it was really good. I recommend giving it a try. I definitely understand it's not for everybody, but that's an interesting concept. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I, I like the concept a lot actually. It's just like how, He's just like, I can't be bothered by this because I already know it. It's just like, he's like almost not, he's not, I don't want to say he's desensitized, but it's like he is almost desensitized to it. It's like, it's not that big of a deal. So mm -hmm. he's not that stressed out. So he gets to like literally look at life through a different lens. Yeah. That's kind of cool. In a way, in a way, like also he's dealing with a lot of shit, like with himself, like he has issues, but he doesn't feel comfortable because like he shouldn't have these issues. But then also talking about stuff. He's like, why are we talking about this? This is, you know, I, this is supposed to be a normal high school life, not talking about <laughs> your problems and whatever. <laughs> Just like normal teenage, <laughs> normal teenage stuff. Yeah. But he doesn't even realize that it's super normal. Right. And then, oh crap, I said I had four and I think I blanked on the last one. Shit. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. But yeah, those three, um, really good. Really good. <laughs> There's just been so many bangers on Netflix and Hulu. Like, I started a series, 911, and then I was like, 911 Lone Star, and I'm just like, this is my favorite show. I can't stop watching it. And it's just like, I'm waiting for it to come back. But it's just like, there, are, there have just been so many great shows, even pre and into the pandemic. And I'm just surprised that they've all survived mm. with the pandemic because, like, Hollywood it took that extremely serious to the point where they were not filming, they weren't producing, they weren't doing anything, and then we're just sitting here like, uh oh. Like <laughs> I thought like at one well, point, we're like, doing is consuming, consuming and yeah. watching. Yeah. And then eventually it's just like, Oh shit. We're <laughs> not gonna have anything to watch. Mm -hmm. And like another another one that was huge, like right as the pandemic was hitting was like locking key. And I finished that all, and I was just like, "When's the next one fucking coming out? When's it coming out?" And then it's just like, "Yeah, we're we're not producing or anything for a while." I'm like, "Oh!" <laughs> <laughs> and then I finally found out that they started producing towards the end of like 
the summer of last year towards like november ish they st- they got their scripts i was like yes i can't wait for it and they just <laughs> I, I i just saw it it just like popped up oh, on nice. netflix oh, did that, was, did that I, wake I was, you up <laughs> i was looking for some of the things that have like really surprised me and that was definitely one of them like i loved that concept but mm. it's just like there are so many like we probably could sit here for hours going over like all the shows that have just been so great mm-hmm. yeah papa griffin chat brings up the witcher witcher season two has been in a wait for like three years um i think I've, it's coming out I've, soon yeah they announced it witcher con that. or whatever the fuck it was <laughs> yeah so I, I honestly did i honestly didn't know that henry cavill was that big of a nerd yeah he really commits i, I heard uh i think it might be a joke but i heard that when he got the call back to be superman he was he missed it because he was playing wow oh really <laughs> yeah that's what i heard i don't know how true it is but if that is that's pretty badass that's funny, that's i funny. love that um i did remember my other show and thought of another one so the other one was netflix it was uh stranger things i did not think i was gonna like stranger uh, things and that one took i over. couldn't really get into stranger things. no fair enough what yeah. uh what season did you watch did you just I've watch watched, first i watched a good bit of them all like i because my uh, I was talking to a, a lady and we were watching Stranger Things and I was just like uh, I couldn't really get into it. Fair enough. Oh, that re- that reminds me of one. So it's not a. I it's can see not the. A, yeah, it's it's great, but this one's even better. <laughs> so it's a it's a three parter movie series. Oh, the newer ones that just released. I don't yeah, know. The, yeah, the Fear Street. Mm. Oh my gosh! As soon as I finished it, I was like, I need to know more. I need to know please i want more give me more like that was such a good like three-parter movie and i'm glad they did it that way like i think they wanted to make it one full movie and they're just like yeah we can't do that so Mm -hmm. they made it like three movies and they put it out in the middle of like july and yeah like i loved how it went like back in time back to the future um so Hmm. john have you watched um I think it's Haunted of Hill House, Haunting of Hill House. You have, okay. I've heard good yeah. things about that, so I just thought yeah, that would be on you, the same if, line. If you haven't watched that, I know you're not a huge <laughs> into scary things. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> yeah, Hill House is definitely scary. There were nights where I was like, I couldn't sleep mm-hmm. because I was thinking about it. But it's like, I don't know. It's not like there are parts where it's terrifying and like the like the the dread just builds and then it finally pops Mm. and you're like all that dread is built and you're just like you're sitting there scared but the other one the same people that made that made uh the haunting of bly house isn't that the second season or something no that's a completely different different story yeah it's just like uh you know how like american horror story it's like that oh okay completely different story same or different actors actresses uh-huh. um and that one is actually um a love story yeah. but it's really really good that one that one you guys you would definitely like that one mm. like it's not it's not super scary at least in my opinion i when it comes to scary movies gotcha yeah and then i said i uh, thought of one more show um i i didn't know if i was gonna like it because it's an anime and sometimes they go a little bit over the top but uh, my hero academia that one blew up for uh, lady and i uh first couple episodes are a little rough to get through just because the main character is very emotional <laughs> and i was like oh my god is this gonna be every episode where he's just like overwhelmed with his emotions and whatever but once we got past that oh my god so great so many cool characters yeah, yeah. so many cool power sets the 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 story is fantastic we're slacking a little bit on season five which is out now but i yeah really really good i i would highly recommend that honestly that got me back into anime oh nice i didn't know you watched that too damn it john we need to catch up yeah i'm on uh i'm on overhaul oh okay cool 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 yes yeah he hasn't he hasn't fought him yet he just met him i'm on that episode where he just met him cool man very nice yeah. Do you have a favorite? My roommate has been... Superhero? The... Oh. Or just a favorite character in general. Um. 
I think All Might is extremely funny uh -huh. and extremely like I'm like, yo, dude, come on now. <laughs> like you Really? <laughs> uh but uh I do like Deku. Uh -huh. Um I'm trying to think. Mineta is so annoying. I do not like <laughs> Oh, Mineta. I love Mineta just because he's a doofus. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I thought like there was at one point where he came in clutch yeah and it's just like all right but you're you're redeemable you're redeemable but you're, you're still really he's stupid. a dumbass but he's a lot <laughs> he's an enjoyable I dumbass like, i have no idea how you made it into this school but yeah good, good on you good on you son um but no i honestly like i love a lot of them they're mm -hmm. like it's, it's it's just like it's hard to pick just one fair enough that i like better than all of them like Todoroki is really cool um I love his progression of how he like mm. is starts as an asshole like an asshole cold-hearted asshole but then gets like warmer hearted but still kind of like cold mm. at the same time um I really like Bakugo if okay. he was like not as intense as he is it's just like bro I'm gonna kill just you. let people love you yes, just okay. let people love you we're at school relax <laughs> we're fucking yeah, doing a test <laughs> i'm gonna kill you bro we're in, we're in the middle of tests um but i like deku and i like the uh the uh the hinted romance between him and uh oraka i yep. think that's how you say her name oraka uh, i like that yeah that's pretty cool like mm -hmm. There's just a lot of great characters. It's not like, it's not like typical animes. It's like this one they actually build everybody at the same time. Right. Not like how Naruto built on the on the, the three core, and then as it went, it's like, oh wait, who's that guy that looks like Bruce Lee? Oh, his name's Rock Lee. Oh, oh, that's who. Ooh, he's interesting. No, it's like they build all of them at the same time, mm -hmm. which is really cool. For sure. Yeah, I think Aizawa, the teacher, he's definitely top for me. He's my favorite. No, dude, Brett, that's you. I know. <laughs> dude, every time I've seen him, I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's Brett. <laughs> One so day I'll get him. One that. day. <laughs> <laughs> He's great. <sighs> I mean, he does He does get with, you know, a really hot teacher, so, you know. Miss Joke. Kind of matches We've only head. seen her once. Where the fuck's she at? <laughs> we need more Miss Joke. <laughs> Ah, oh, boy. <laughs> no, yeah, definitely. It's definitely a really, really good show. I'm waiting for the day that, like, I get a girlfriend and we watch um, Naruto Shibuden together mm -hmm. or watch the Naruto series together. Like, that is, that'll be goals for me. It's like, she's like, yeah, I want to watch Naruto with you. It's like, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my goal. Nice. Very cool. Billy, did you think of anything besides the book that kind of... I, I had two shows. Okay. I had two shows I thought of. The first one, um, right in the very beginning of the pandemic, when I had gotten my first um, quarantine, I ended up watching all of Ozark on Netflix. Oh, okay. With, um, Jason Bateman, I think his name is. Yeah. I think that's who he is. Um, but I one of my favorite shows... Is, yeah, it's really good. One of my favorite shows is Breaking Bad. And so when I was looking at shows, I saw Ozark, which is basically just Breaking Bad, but instead of following the cook, you follow the money launderer. <laughs> it was very, very interesting, and I blew through that whole series, and I ended up watching it with my parents as well, because cool. they really liked Breaking Bad, so I was like, let's, let's watch this, because we can't really leave the house for a while. So um, that's that, really interesting. <laughs> is that in, like, the Ozark Mountains? like, like uh, Yeah, the, the lake there in, uh, what is that? Uh, fact Missouri? Check. Is it Missouri? <laughs> Whoa, that's cute. We both said Missouri at the same time. I think Missouri? It is. that might be true. Because because uh, if that's the case, Ozark. I went to school. Yep, Missouri, Arkansas, is in Oklahoma. So the cool thing about that is I actually went out and I went to school in Missouri. Oh. And, and dude, the landscape there, it is oh, crazy. Gorgeous. It is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like. Like, mm -hmm. where I was was, like, farmland, but then, like, we, we drove out to Jefferson City, which I think was the capital, and I could be wrong about that, but we, we went out to Jefferson City, and the drive there, like, there were these red, like, clay mountain things, yeah. and it was just, like, I opened up my eyes from from sleeping on the drive, and I'm just like, oh, where my hell are God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, that was my first thought, but then the other thought was like, that is so freaking beautiful. And then there's like yeah. this big giant like 
lake pond thing and mm-hmm. there's like people in boats just partying i was like why am i not down there i want to be down there that looks fun. <laughs> yep so. that shows really and that it plays onto the landscape and the all that too in the in the uh cinematography right is mm-hmm. that the word for it or the the video yep. effects of it like it's just a gorgeously shot show and it's very suspenseful very jason does a great job with that but um Wait on season four, which I think is the final season. Hmm. Um, and then, of course, oh, I thought, as we were I talking they were about, already done. No, they did three seasons. They're doing one more and uh, got delayed because of COVID. Oh, wow. Um, I didn't before. know that. Yep. So it should be out. I think they said 2022 is the fourth season. Cool. Um, so that's exciting because they got a lot of stuff to wrap up there. Right. But um, that and then I finally gave in. I had never watched Legend of Korra because of just how much I loved Avatar The Last Airbender. And I was like, ah, I don't really want to, because everyone always trashed on Korra, and I was like, why, oh. why is it, why do they always, like, at least what I'd heard, they always trashed on the series and everything, and I was like, oh, I don't want to watch it, it's not good. That, and yeah. then one day I was like, oh, I'll watch it, and I blew through it. I thought it was, I thought it was phenomenal. That's still on my to-do list. I have the box set over there, but I've heard great yeah. things. So. You definitely you know, should watch it. I think it's good. The, sh- the episodes are really good, and the storyline is very good. Korra can be a little obnoxious and annoying but that's like that's that's the cool thing about her and like what you don't under like if you just like if you look into like the different um avatars and you really dig deep like each avatar has a very specific personality and i think it goes back to the one before kiyoshi which is the the water guy i can't remember his name but he lost his uh he lost his significant other to that that face stealing thing Oh yes, oh. And, mm-hmm. yes. And he was like the youngest avatar to die. He was he died at like thirty four because he went looking for her, and he went and went into the spirit realm. And each it's it says that each avatar before them struggles with the last uh, the last uh, learning the style of the last. So if you were born as a water guy, the next person who was Kyoshi struggled with learning water mm-hmm. and then the next person was fire which was roku he struggled with learning water whoa and then, <laughs> and then the Ang struggled one, with fire yep right i mean and he then, struggled most yeah. with 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 earth but um he got that but fire was the hardest one for him to get wow because yeah, he had to go, he had to go get the dragons yeah but and then um, now aura struggled with air because Aang was with air a lot her. wow yeah, oh cool. yeah uh, and also, I give it more justice than what, what most people give. Like, if you look online or on Reddits and things, they always trash it. Hmm. Or at least I saw a lot of trash of it. But um, no, I really think it's because also, I think it's because one, they can't get over Avatar, The Last Airbender, and how much it was, how great it was, whatever. But two, like, they never had um, the two producers or the two founders of, you know, Avatar. They uh, never had a set, like, amount of series that they were going to have or seasons that they were going to have. They oh, only had one at a they... time. Oh, so they okay. yeah um so they ended up getting four but they never could like have like a a multi-season plot because they never knew they like if nickelodeon was going to re-up their thing or not Interesting. so yeah hmm. they at first they almost didn't even give them like um the show at all because they were like oh no kids aren't going to enjoy like a, a woman avatar okay yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah no like that's that's that, that is a thing and it was really stupid because cora was as annoying as she I, was, I don't was even think she was annoying. Story. I thought she was badass. And oh, I no, think she definitely was. No, nah, I don't think she was. I think she was just a teenager, and teenagers are ineptly annoying. But I don't find <laughs> it as annoying. I think it's just her being who she's supposed to be, and like. Right. I mean, Ang was pretty annoying scenes. in the first season, in the first book. Yeah, in the first book. I want to play games, guys. And exactly. then, he found, then, he, then, he, then he saw the genocide of his people. And he's like, There's a couple him. moments where he had, like, a, okay, <laughs> got to fucking focus yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. But also, I, I think the fight scenes in Korra were just so, so much better, too. Yeah. There's so, you can see, like, the growth yeah. in um, animation and everything. Like, it was just. <sighs> I'll definitely, I'll definitely agree to that. The first season of Korra was, that was great. The My the, favorite the is the, uh, my favorite's the third one. The third season with uh that's, with Zakir. Oh, that's really good. That's, that's really good. Season. The uh, the fourth season's pretty badass. Yeah, 
I, I think it wrapped up well. Yeah. My favorite, my whole entire favorite thing, like, I play D&D on Wednesdays, and whenever we do something, um, and somebody's like, oh, yeah, uh, they're, like, if they're really good at something, we'll say, oh, oh, hey, do the thing. Do the thing. <laughs> do the we'll thing. Reference. Yeah. Julie, do the thing. Do the thing. <laughs> okay. That's but one yeah. of the top characters in that show. Brett wouldn't know, but... I'll um, know one day. <laughs> and also, the good thing about that, I don't know if you guys saw or not, but the two original um, founders of Avatar, they were originally going to help with the Netflix adaptation, live adaptation. They backed out of it, and they have both created Avatar Studios in Nickelodeon, and they're going to use... They're going to build upon the Avatar universe in Nickelodeon via... 2D animation, and I think they said they're gonna do some CGI work too. Oh, but they have their own fucking studio now in Nickelodeon. So the Netflix one just not. No, the Netflix one's still happening. They no, just I know it's happening. Just like not creators. involved with them at all. Nope, not involved with. So this Brian. is the movie all over again. All right, cool. Just gonna. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but this I I like the yeah. castings a lot so okay. far for okay. the they, Netflix one. Yeah, they said that they wanted to keep it as close to. Because they watched the movie, they're like, "It's atrocious. <laughs> let's let's do one better." And they yeah. really wanted to stay close to the actual story and the but way it was. But it's a very, to... but it's a very bad sign that Brian yeah. and the other guy both backed out because they were in it. And I was like, "Oh, they're gonna help. They're gonna be. Right. It's gonna be all right." And then they both didn't say why they backed out, but they backed out. And I was mm. like, oh, "It's not good." I was hoping you found out because I've been wondering <laughs> why they left. No, it's like, I oh Jesus, is it that bad? Or I just wondered, like, once you said that, I was like, oh, something bad must have happened for them to go and make their own studio. I think just because when Aang and Korra got put on Netflix and they saw how much streaming and how much, like, enjoyment, like, people are still getting onto it. Like, if you watch Zuko and Azula's fight on YouTube, I think that's got over, like, 20 million views. Oh, cool. So there is an audience that, like, people want to see this shit. So right. I think they yeah. probably just had a good offer from them and they're like, hey, come do what Nickelodeon you guys want to do. woke up and said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what? That's probably what happened. They probably, Nickelodeon finally came to their senses and just like, hey, we'll give you whatever you want and you'll have full creative license. Yeah, that... it's like, oh, I have to deal with a person here who I have to kind of finagle my creative mm -hmm. license. Or I could just go here and have complete creative. With my, yeah, with my other coworker, and I think they brought in the uh, original music guy as well, like the cool. original sound guy as well to bring it in. From and they've been saying all types of stuff. They're like, oh, we have stuff with the original gang we haven't touched on. We got other stories of different avatars that we want to build on, and I'm just so pumped not, for that. Not to plug anybody, but the uh, the two original voice actors of Zuko and Korra do a Avatar yes. podcast. Yes. Oh, what's the guy's name? Um, uh, Dante Bon. Uh, thank Dante. you. Yeah, he's done stuff nice. with Achievement Hunter too, and I'm like, oh shit, it's the yeah. guy that plays Zuko. <laughs> you can hear it in his voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very clear. Yeah. Honor. Most people, most people don't know this, but he, uh, he was Rufio. Rufio, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Rufio. Oh. <laughs> yep. Yeah. He. he uh, when I I listened to a uh, interview about him talking about Robin Williams, like, oh my gosh. Yep. It's not that same interview. Mm -hmm. But. They, uh, their second episode is with the creators, hmm. and they're mm -hmm. literally like talking to them about their ideas, and they're just like, yeah, yeah, it just it just happened, like, and the way that they uh, they went to school for animation, like the school they went to is such like a tight knit group, like after they graduated, they just went to like the people who were there before them that graduated, they went out to their house to the to the seniors before them. And slept on their couch, and because they like went to the same school, they got them connected, and then they just kept doing that over and over again, like paying it forward to like all the seniors that are just like, all right, you need a job, come sleep on my couch, let's get you connected. It was just like a perpetual like uh, windmill of, all right, come out here, get a job. All right, come on out out here and get a job. It's just like I thought that was like so cool that 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 happened for them mm -hmm. and multiple other people, and then they were just like. The way that it happened was just like they didn't plan for it to happen like like the one guy was a year behind him and he was already out there and built all his like connections and then that guy just came out stayed with him and then they just happened to both work at the same company and they both happened to have a really great idea and then it just flourished so i was like that's that's a story like one in a million yeah 100 percent. nice 